While this season has been an absolute roller coaster for the Los Angeles Lakers and its fans, I actually think there have been quite a bit of feel good moments. Guys, regardless of what anybody says, this shot from Austin Reeves was definitely legit. Final seconds, out to Reeves, three pointer, bang! Reeves gives him a three point lead with nine tenths of a second remaining. No timeouts for Dallas. Bullock from half court. Oh, off the mark, and the Lakers survive. And you have to feel good about the reaction that this Lakers team had after he hit it. Seriously, the concentration that it takes to hit this shot is unbelievable. On top of that, the confidence that your teammates have to have in you has to be through the roof. Guys, keep in mind, Austin Reeves is an undrafted rookie. This guy is not supposed to be doing this in his first season with the Los Angeles Lakers. Reeves' story and reaction to hitting this shot were pretty cash. Reeves said just the genuine nature of the guys you don't see that much especially with the type of guys that we have on this team six hall of famers and other guys that have been in the league for 10 to 12 years so really just the genuineness of it it's special I'm lost for words I've grown up watching all these guys play so for me to even just be teammates with them is special now a lot of guys love to bash Russell Westbrook and that's sort of become a common theme but one thing that has been concurrent and consistent in the NBA is teammates of Russell Westbrook saying that Russell Westbrook is a phenomenal teammate and an unbelievable leader. Reeves cites Russell Westbrook as a major reason that he had the confidence to knock down this shot. To quote Reeves, like I said earlier, just the confidence that Russ instills in me is a story going back to Sacramento in the summer league where I went one for eight from three. He came in the locker room and was like, way to shoot it. I'm looking at him like, what are you talking about? I shot horrible. Nah, I'm just happy that you're shooting it. Now, it's no secret that Russell Westbrook absolutely loves assists, so he's going to want everybody to shoot it as soon as he passes it. Guys, I'm, I'm joking. Russ is an absolute beast, and I love that quote from Reeves. For anybody that follows this channel and plays basketball, you would know that having teammates like that are by far the best teammates to have. You don't want somebody that's chewing you out every single miss because then they start to get in your head. Now, maybe I'm not speaking for you guys because everybody responds differently at the end of the day to different techniques. But personally, I've always been somebody that thrives on confidence. If I miss three and my teammates are still confident in me and I hit that next shot, I might be good for four straight. Scratch that, I might pull a LeBron James and completely take over a game. All right, let me chill, let me chill, let me chill. So guys, I know you guys have been seeing what's going on around the league. In case you haven't, I'm just going to say that cases have been ramping up. It really feels like at this moment, a lot of games are going to come down to not only who's the deepest, but who has less players in the health and safety protocols. This is a genuine question and I'm not trying to scare anybody, but does anybody think that the NBA may be headed towards another shutdown or at least another pause? I definitely think that it might be in the NBA's best interest to pause things for at least maybe a week or two, but at the end of the day, I guess, who really knows? At the time that I'm making this video, the Los Angeles Lakers currently have five players in the health and safety protocols. Avery Bradley, Malik Monk, Dwight Howard, and Talon Horton Tucker. Oh yeah, and last but not least, Russell Westbrook. The timing is really unfortunate for everybody in the protocols, but I especially feel like the timing is unfortunate basketball-wise for Russell Westbrook. Because as of late, I have started to notice a more sound and more locked in Russell Westbrook. What I'm trying to say is, regardless of the numbers, I think the chemistry is really starting to show. Shout out to the Los Angeles Lakers for being 5-1 and one in overtime this season. That's really good for a team that quote unquote has no chemistry and has Anthony Davis playing some of the worst basketball of his career. Guys, if you want an Anthony Davis breakdown, just let me know. Remember, I am a Pelicans fan. I watched this guy in New Orleans. What's going on with Anthony Davis right now is not normal. If you guys say you want a breakdown, I will do the deepest of deep dives 
on this situation. That being said, I would bet on a talent like Anthony Davis turning things around sooner as opposed to later. While we are talking about people who have turned things around, we have to talk about Isaiah Thomas. With Isaiah Thomas, I really don't even know where to start. This guy was the last pick in the NBA draft. He is every inch of five foot nine. When I talk about people doing things that they're not supposed to be doing, IT is not supposed to be doing what he has done in the NBA. He went to a situation that a lot of players just don't win in. He went to Sacramento to start his career. I'm sorry, Sacktown. I really do have mad love for my Kings, but you guys have to figure something out over there. IT would turn heads in Sacramento, then go on to become a legitimate MVP candidate with the Boston Celtics. At IT's peak, this guy was averaging 28.9 points per game on 46.3% from the field. He legitimately shot a better percentage than some of your favorite big men. Oh, and by the way, he was knocking threes down at a casual 37.9%. When IT signed with the Pelicans not too long ago, I was really excited, but I was disappointed because his time with the Pelicans wouldn't be the longest. He would score 10 points, 11 points, and two points while shooting around 33% from the field. But I don't think his percentage told us everything that he was capable of doing. The NBA has always been so weird to me because regardless of how good or bad you think IT is, I think a lot of us could agree that he's better at this moment than a lot of 14th and 15th men on teams rosters. And that's not me taking a shot at those guys that are on the roster, but this is more so me saying that it's so weird that a guy like IT can be out of the league despite being talented, while the NBA will hold certain players around who don't have the most upside and will likely never see NBA action. Remember when Carmelo Anthony went from out of the league to starting for the Portland Trail Blazers? You're telling me that Carmelo Anthony wasn't better than a lot of people on NBA benches? Yeah, that's something that I simply refuse to believe. And again, apples to oranges, but my point remains the same. According to Sports Center, the Lakers plan to sign Isaiah Thomas to a 10 day contract soon if granted a hardship exemption by the NBA. As bad as things are in the NBA, and as much as cases going up sucks, I think there is one thing that is good that comes out of this entire situation. And that is that guys who deserve chances are going to have more opportunity to get those chances now again this isn't me saying that this is a good situation at all but i do enjoy watching players who have not got the chance to show what they can do show what they can do at the end of the day there's a lot of talent in the g league i'm honestly shocked that we don't see more guys on 10-day contracts garrison matthews went from the g league to lighting things up with the rockets any team would love to have this guy then you guys know seth curry right one of the best shooters in the nba he spent some time in the g league working on his craft and look at him now while we're talking about people going off does anybody remember isaiah thomas dropping 81 points and then saying that he felt like everybody gave up on him you can't tell me this is not a feel-good moment but beyond being just a feel-good moment this is a moment that it has earned and worked for this guy has been in various leagues he's been grinding he's been putting in the work putting in the hours this guy literally dropped 42 points in his nba g league debut this past wednesday the craziest thing about this whole situation to me is that if you ask it he'll tell you that he was very close to signing with the lakers this offseason quote i was very close i really believe if the rondo buyout didn't happen i would have been a laker all respect to rondo and respect to the lakers organization but i was around those guys a little bit i was able to work out with braun and westbrook so they seen me in my element and they seen me back to the person that i am things happen i can't control that but i was very close to signing with the lakers and that would have probably been a really good opportunity to be able to play with such great players and to be able to learn from them great players and being an organization like the lakers again that would have been super dope but it didn't happen and you have to move forward i don't know about you guys but i'm happy to see it continue his nba career hopefully it signing with the lakers means that his time in the nba isn't close to being done because we all know he can still hoop clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel i'm get like coop bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload